Good evening, everyone. Uh, just a reminder, if uh, there's anyone that doesn't have a parking permit, please make sure to raise your hand. We have some students that will help you with uh, getting the parking permits because our campus police do uh, patrol all night long, so you will uh, eventually get a ticket if you haven't yet uh, gotten that parking permit. Well, uh, we'll get started in just a moment, uh, just on some of our upcoming events. Tonight is the uh, final uh, final event in our fall lecture series of the Armenian Studies program, but beginning in the spring, uh, we're going to have quite a few events, and I've only put uh, a few of them up here. These are sort of the highlights of the spring semester as it comes up in just a moment. You'll see some of them, and I want to just tell you a little bit about them, and then tell you a little bit about some of of the uh, speakers that will be coming and some of the programs that we're going to be having because it will be a very full and interesting spring semester with a lot of different types of uh, presentations and lectures and movies. So I hope that it will be something that will be interesting. So uh, I started a, a radio hour uh, through Multicultural 1600 AM. If you're interested on Sundays at 2 o'clock, if you're home or in the car and would like to listen to it, on Saturday, February 22nd, there's going to be a benefit concert to help the Merhuis program in Armenia. Tonight you'll see some of the Merhuis program in the slides and also in some of the videos. On Sunday, March 22nd, will be our 32nd our Armenian Studies Annual Banquet, where we highlight our student graduates and our minors in Armenian Studies. If you'd like to be on our mailing list and are not yet, outside there's a, a sheet that you can put your name, your email, and if you'd like to get uh, things hard copy, you can also put your uh, address on it. Uh, and also the Soroyan House, uh, which we're supporting because I'm on the board of the Soroyan House. And if you haven't yet had a chance to go see the Soroyan House Museum, you can go online to soroyanhouse.com and uh, make a registration. It's open Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. There's four time slots uh, per day, and you can just go on and make a reg registration for it, reserve a date and a time, and go and see the Soroyan uh, museum. Okay? Alright, so let me uh, just switch this and I'll be ready to start today. Okay, so today we're going to be uh, looking at the Armenian Studies Program Summer Studies 2019 program. So I'm Professor Barla Dermogradichin. Today we're going to be uh, listening also to some of our students. So we have kind of a multi, uh, multimedia program today. I'm going to start out by uh, talking a little bit about the background of the program. We'll look at some slides of Armenia, of what the students were doing. And then about midway through the slide program, we're going to stop and take a look at a special video that was made of the trip, in about a 10 minute video, which will give you another view from a student perspective of the trip. And then interspersed throughout the talk and at the end, uh, we'll have students who would like to say a few words about uh, their reflections on the trip and about uh, what was going on. So uh, the Armenian Studies Program has been doing these types of uh, trips for over 30 years. You'll see some of our early pictures uh, in the program. Uh, this year, I was accompanied by uh, my fellow colleague, Dr. Sergio Laporta. So he's in the back right now, but he'll be saying a few words. Dr. Laporta, welcome. <laughs> And then we have some of the students that were participating in the program, and I'm going to look around and see all of them, but I may miss a few of you, so if you're not sitting right in the front, uh, we may not see you. So I'm going to introduce them as, um, as we kind of go down the line. So Kara Statler can stand up. Um, you don't have to applaud, but we just want to introduce you to them. Kara Statler, <laughs> David Saprazian, uh, Matthew Magridichian, then uh, Susie Ekmechian, Andrew Hagopian, uh, Stephen Gonzalez, Amanda Esquivel over here, and is there anybody else that was on the trip? I didn't see anybody else. Okay, so this is our uh, half of our group of seven out of the 14, so uh, we'll be hearing from them. Thank you very much. So we're going to get started with our program. Mosef, if you want to get the, the lights for us, and we'll get started. He's going to get the lights for us, and we'll, we'll get started. So uh, the intent tonight is to give you both uh, a visual look at Armenia, but also to give you sort of the deeper look, meaning to talk about 
why this trip is important for students and for the Armenian Studies Program, and really for Armenia and for people in the diaspora. I want to first of all thank the Leon S. Peters Foundation, uh, based in Fresno. Uh, they have supported the Armenian Studies Program in a variety of activities, uh, but one of their ways that they are supporting our program is by supporting the students to go to Armenia. And they and the Division of Continuing and Global Education here at Fresno State who also supported the program, because you can now get your passports at Fresno State. If you're going to renew a passport, you can come on campus. And the fees from that passport, part of those fees go to help students who go on study abroad programs. And so they give, you, uh, they give us, our students, uh, a very substantial amount of money, I think. So between the two sources, the Leon S. Peters Foundation and the Division of Continuing and Global Education, uh, the cost of the trip uh, was cut by about $1,500. So it made the, the trip very affordable, more affordable for students to be able to participate. Um, this tells you a little bit about our trip and about the nine trips that we talked about. There's been more than uh, nine trips, or there have been nine trips beginning in 1988. And over the nine trips, 96 students have participated. So that's 96 students that ha are, have an experience in traveling and working in Armenia. And I think when they come back to the community, they have a better appreciation for Armenia, and in that way also contribute back to the, to the community. Uh, I wanted to show you a picture from a few years ago. That's, that's me over here. Uh, that's that's uh, Matthew Gendian, that's Armin Devedjian, and that's Phil Garo. We're in Red Square. So when we went, for those of you that don't know the, the story of how to get to Armenia, before the 1990s, the only way to go to Armenia was to travel through Moscow. Moscow or St. Petersburg to get to Armenia. There were no direct flights because this was the period of communism. This was the Soviet Union. And so this was 1990. It was a small group that we went with. Uh, but here we are with His Holiness uh, Vaskin uh, Catholicos, who was Catholicos of all Armenians from 1955 until his death in 1994. He's by most accounts considered uh, one of the most beloved of the Armenian Catholicoi, heads of the Armenian Church. And we were privileged to be able to uh, visit with him through my connections with the Armenian Church. And this is one of the experiences that I like our students to share, is to be able to visit and to talk with people, uh, not only just everyday people, but also people in important uh, positions. This also was 1990. Uh, just this spring, we had a reunion of all the people that uh, had traveled and gone in our trip uh, on our trips. And so we had this here at Fresno State, so you can just see some of the 96 students that you recognize uh, that have participated in the Armenian Studies Program uh, trip. Now, one of the background things I wanted to talk to you about is why, why do we go to the trouble to organize these trips? And I say trouble in a, in a nice way, but uh, it's extremely time intensive to be able to plan these kinds of trips. We have to plan a year and a half in advance because we have to go through all the university approvals, we then have to plan with our travel agents, we have to plan with the hotels, we have to recruit students. Uh, once we have the students, then we have to plan the program, where we're going and what we're doing. Why do we do all this? Well, I put four points. These are not exhaustive, we have more than this. But I think number one, it provides an opportunity for students to experience Armenia firsthand. Which means that our program offers courses, and you listen and you learn through courses, but going to that place uh, really kind of embeds that experience in you. Second, it puts into action what they've learned in the courses. So you can learn about all the Armenian churches you want and all about uh, Armenian history, but until you go to that place and see that it is a place, a, a literal real place, yes, it's 9,000 miles away, but it is a place that's 12 hours ahead, uh, then you really begin to understand. And also I think students see and feel Armenian history and culture. Uh, that is again, by experiencing and seeing these physical structures. And finally, again, uh, one of the comments we usually get from most students is they've never been in a place where everything is Armenian. So they are immersed in a complete Armenian environment. Uh, Armenia is one of the few countries in the world which is very homogenous. I believe the latest statistics is somewhere between 97 and 98% of the people in the country are Armenian. So when you go to Armenia, you are immersed in Armenian experience just because everyone almost that you see is Armenian. So for these reasons, we organize these trips. And today, again, you'll hear from some of the students 
and their um, reflections on, on the trip. So we started out by, uh, by visiting Armenia, and one of the things, as I said, was to visit simply some of the historic places. This is the statue of Mother Armenia, which looms over the entire uh, city of Yerevan. It was uh, actually, years ago, it was a statue of Stalin. Up until Stalin died in 1953, it was a statue of Stalin. In 1954, uh, the Armenians replaced Stalin's statue uh, with Mother Armenia, who faces Turkey, and you can see that she's very protective with her large sword. And underneath it is a very interesting military museum, which is a museum of Armenia's military history in this period. But here's our group uh, at, this, uh, at this place. And, uh, you know, we traveled around. It's a combination of a lot of things. You, you get to see really the beauty of the country. And until you really see Mount Ararat from a perspective of, of being in the country, it is really uh, the highlight of, uh, of the trip is when can we see Mount Ararat? And you can see it in the background uh, here. Uh, the trip itself uh, lasted uh, 15 days. We left on May 29th and uh, returned on June the 14th. And our headquarters was in downtown Yerevan. So Yerevan is the capital of Armenia. It's a population of about a million people. And the center of the city is like a combination, I say, of New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco. It's kind of, and Washington, D.C., because it is the political it is the economic, it is the cultural center of the country of Armenia. And we stay in what is called the um, Ani Hotel, which is this red location. And you can see the red line. The red line is actually a planned green belt. You can see it's green. When the city was planned, this was planned to be a circular green belt by the architect Alexander Tamamian. And the purpose was that in the center of the town, uh, you could walk around, but then everything that's important is in the middle. Uh, Freedom Square, we'll see in just a moment, often called Opera Square, and then Republic Square, and then the major streets. Uh, this is a view of the hotel we stayed in. Again, I like to stay uh, in a place which is central because then it makes it easy to walk around, and our experience is to walk quite a bit uh, because I don't like to just be in a bus all day long. I like the students to experience the walking through the town of uh, Yerevan and through, through Armenia. Uh, this gives you a very interesting uh, view of things. What, what strikes you about this slide? What strikes you? Someone said? <coughs> that the street signs are now in English. So no longer are the street signs only in Armenian and Russian. And before, by the way, it was very difficult to find a street sign. Now you can see that it is in English and Armenian. It's just a reflection of what is taking place in the country. Uh, English is replacing Russian, for better or worse, as the second language in Armenia. Uh, most young people, and even people of an older age, can now communicate very easily in the English language. As we traveled around then, uh, we learned history by visiting churches, but also by walking around. This small church is a 13th century church which is called the Katholige Church. Behind it is a brand new church called the St. Anna Church. But actually there was an older church which surrounded this, an Armenian church, which was destroyed, blown up by Stalin in the 1940s, uh, and it was replaced by uh, what was called at the time the Linguistics Institute. So we see the changes over time, and this historic church, 13th century church, is one of the few oldest buildings left in all of Yerevan. Uh, you know, we complain about Fresno sometimes, well, I do, that a lot of our history is gone, right? We don't have a lot of older buildings. Unfortunately, some of that is happening in Armenia over time as well. Now, the summer study program combined uh, a couple of things, and I kind of want to give you the theory behind the way that I uh, ran the trip. We, we had day trips outside of Yerevan, but we also had activities in the city. And those included the visits to the museums, historic sites, and churches. And there's plenty of free time, so students had a chance to just mix in the, the markets, out in the, in the evening, at restaurants, and with, with other people. This is the Yerebuni Museum. Yerebuni Museum is important because uh, Armenia considers itself, Yerevan considers itself to have been founded in the year 782 BC, which makes it today one of the oldest cities in the world. Two years ago, it celebrated its 2,800th anniversary as a city. And the museum uh, gives you an idea of the 
wealth of the history of the Armenians. Now take a look at this uh, list. This is not a comprehensive list, but just a list of some of the museums and highlights of where we went. Today I can't give you uh, a whole trip in, in a few slides, but it gives you an idea of what we did. We went to the Mesra Bashkots Maten Atara. Uh, we got a tour of the, of the beautiful manuscripts, and I'll tell you more about that in a moment. We went to the Sardarabad Memorial and Museum, marking the 1918 battle where Armenians defeated the Turks and saved the First Republic of Armenia. We went to the Hovhannes Tumanyan House Museum up in the northern part of Armenia. Tumanyan is a literary figure. We went to the Megarian Carpet Tour. I'll tell you more about that in a, in a little bit. We took the aerial tramway, the Wings of Tatev, to the Monastery of Tatev, way in the southern part of Armenia. We went to the National Gallery of Art, saw modern Armenian painting from the 18th century all the way to the modern period. Such artists as Fatiro Sarian, Minas, uh, and many other artists of the modern period. We went to the Ara Brandy Museum. Yes, we drank uh, brandy, but we also learned about the history that Ara Brandy is today a very important part of Armenia's economy because it is the number one export of the country of Armenia to foreign countries. It's the number one bringer of income. So it's an important place to, to visit. And we also went to the Lusik Akuletsi House Museum. Uh, Lusik Akuletsi was a, a woman who was related to our local artist, Vadas Samuelian. It was actually his niece. And she used to dress in Armenian costumes every day. And she had a beautiful house that today is a museum, uh, which is a very important museum, a new museum in, in Armenia. Uh, we visited churches, lots of churches. The St. Gregory Armenian Church in Yerevan is the world's largest Armenian church. It was completed in 2001 on the 1700th anniversary of the uh, adoption of Christianity. You can see it in the background here. We went on Sundays to churches. Some days we went on other days just to see what people were doing. Did people go to church on, on days like this? In Armenia, the churches are always open. So as opposed to maybe in Fresno, where we're open only on Sunday mornings, in Armenia, people go at all times, in, in all places, uh, throughout the city. Our uh, bus and our bus driver, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, he was a very, a very knowledgeable young man. He actually had a degree, I believe, in, um, in engineering, but he was a driver. Again, there's a problem with some unemployment in the country, but we had a very comfortable bus. Uh, which took us all around uh, the country of Armenia. Uh, I like to have a little bit of comfort in the bus because we're on long trips sometimes, and if you're crowded, uh, it gets a little bit tense sometimes, so uh, we want the, the students to enjoy, uh, enjoy their trip. Uh, the Mesra of Mashlots Matenataran is one of the most important places in all of Armenia. It is the repository, the library, which contains up to over 10,000 Armenian handwritten documents called manuscripts. And I want to show you this because I think it's really indicative of the history of the Armenians. You see this manuscript? Uh, this large manuscript is probably one of the largest, if not the largest, Armenian manuscript. It's called the Musho Jarendir. It's the lectionary from the city of Mush. It's made from the skins, I don't know, and for Professor Laporta maybe you can tell me more, but 600 to 700 sheep probably uh, were used to make this. And the story behind it is that in the genocide, it was saved by two Armenian women who, who divided the manuscript in half, each carrying it from Mush to wherever they ended up. And then one of them ended up in Armenia, and half of it ended up at the Madena Taran, and suddenly, miraculously, the other half was discovered and was reunited, and today it's in the <coughs> Madena Taran. Then notice this. It's one of the smallest manuscripts in the world. It's, it's no more than a couple of inches, and it shows you again uh, the wealth of the Armenian manuscripts, which cover all aspects of Armenian culture, from history to, uh, to music to uh, medicine. The manuscripts are our history. Without those, we would not know about Armenian history. And of course, we get the beautiful illuminated manuscripts, uh, manuscripts that are painted from various periods in Armenian history, uh, this is an Agatangelos, the 5th century Armenian historian. A very interesting picture here. Can you see what's happening? Uh, this is St. Gregory, and you see this blanket? It's covering a boar or a wild beast. That's the king, King Derta. 
because according to the story of Armenians' uh, conversion to Christianity, uh, the king had become a boar, according to the, to the story, until he was healed by St. Gregory. It's the history of the Christianization of Armenia. So we, we took a tour there, and we had a very interesting insider tour, I think, of the, uh, of the area where they conserve manuscripts. So we watched as they took old manuscripts, sometimes with mold, sometimes that were falling apart, and we were watching the process as they were conserving them, restoring these manuscripts. And there's a very nice section in the Madena Taran which restores manuscripts from throughout the world. Uh, this is a very important uh, place that we visited, which illustrated that uh, history of, of the people. So what I'm going to show you occasionally now are maps of Armenia. Pink is all of Armenia. Yerevan is here. And what I tried to do on this trip was to organize uh, our, our out-of-city visits to various regions. Not only to visit just churches, but to actually see the geography and the, the areas as we move. Now, the area of Gumri is the area which in 1988 was struck by a massive earthquake, 6.9 earthquake, uh, which killed up to 100,000 people and left 500,000 people homeless. Uh, that's in the entire northern region uh, up, up here. Many Armenians who live in Fresno today are uh, people who have left that area because after the earthquake, uh, it was a very, very depressed area. Depressed because homes had been destroyed, there was unemployment, and uh, really it was a very difficult place to live. That was 1988. So we're visiting now in 2019. And here's uh, one of the churches, but it's, it's not just any church. Uh, I visited Gumri in 1988. This church, or actually the church that preceded it, was a museum because the communists had closed the church down. It was held, it was just a museum or a storehouse. In 1988, the earthquake destroyed this church completely. And then in the last five years, uh, there have been efforts, as you see, to reconstruct the church. And for those of you that are unfamiliar with Armenian architecture, this is a, based on the model of the Cathedral of Ani, located in Turkey today, which is the great Armenian cathedral completed in the year 1001. It is a model based on that church, and today uh, it is almost reconstructed and is going to be a functioning church. And behind uh, us is this monument, which is to the Armenian, uh, Armenian victims of the genocide, uh, not the genocide, but the earthquake of 1988. So our group was uh, in Gumri. But Gumri is kind of an interesting place. Uh, where's Datavik? Datavik, where are we looking at? Do you remember this place? It's called Sevgul. It's, it's an old Russian fortress, an old Russian fortress, which in the 1870s was a major uh, military site for the Russians. However, today it's been uh, bought by a, by a wealthy Armenian and has now been converted into a theater and a place where people can go and, and uh, enjoy like a restaurant and all of these other things. You see the small cannons here and our group here. Uh, but this black fortress is indicative, again, of the importance of, of Gyumri. Now, Gyumri, we walked around the city, and one thing I, I wanted the students to see was, you know, we can go and see a church, but how do everyday people live? And they live by going shopping, and so we walked through the major market way, and I just was uh, struck by the beauty of the colors of the herbs and spices which are sold in the marketplace, and then coffee over here. You can see the prices... Uh, that would be an Armenian dram. So 2,800 dram, about, it's a, approximately 500 dram, a little less, to one dollar. So a kilo of coffee, a kilo, two pounds of coffee, would be roughly, if you divided it five, uh, a little bit over five dollars, just to give you the, the relative price of it. And in Armenia, a lot of people still, as here, uh, will buy the beans and then uh, grind them up for the coffee. Coffee, of course, is a very popular... Uh, drink in, in Armenia. This is the Gyumri market. Uh, Gyumri is, is on the way up again. Uh, there are good signs of, uh, of activity in Gyumri. Uh, there's a modern area, which is a walking area, which now has some shops, and, and it's slowly coming back to life, but it's been 30 plus years. Our next area that we visited was towards Lake Sevan. There's only one lake in all of Armenia. It's called Lake Sevan here. It's a freshwater lake. 
And you can see on the blue line here that we visited uh, several areas called the Havartin Monastery, the resort area of Bilijan, and then Lake Sevan. I'm not going to show you photos from each of those areas, but I'm just telling you that we, we visited all of these places. So I want to show you again the idea of how things are now coming back to life in Armenia. Do not think of Armenia as it was 30 or 40 years ago. I often talk to people in Fresno and they, they talk about Armenia, but it's their memories from 30 or 40 years ago. The country has changed. We've, we found a restaurant We found a restaurant in Dilijan, which is called Tava, and also it's called Losh. There were two restaurants. One was Losh and one was Tava. And um, I, I kind of found this by asking around. It turned out to be a really nice restaurant. Um, it, it was very, very beautifully decorated in sort of, I don't know, uh, sort of a modern, but also a sort of a historic uh, format. You can see our students are gathered here. There was a wine area. But take a look at this, uh, take a look at this platter, which was, which was uh, served to us, a sort of cheese and meat. And, but if, I mean, this would be served in the best restaurant, I think, in, in America. It's so beautiful. I was really uh, just very pleasantly surprised by the service. And that's what I'm telling you. The service was wonderful. And then the, the delicious, just, you know, it's sort of like the appetizers, the meza, right, before the main meal. And the main meal was actually tava, which means skillet. And the, the food is, is cooked in the skillet. So the pork, the side dish, everything was cooked in a skillet. And then it came out, and each person had a skillet, or each couple of people had a skillet to go along with our, with our food. All of these are experiences. Why? Because I talk, for instance, with the servers and the owner. Uh, there was a young man who had just opened this restaurant, it's no more than two years old, and he told me that yeah, we're opening up new restaurants, and again, it's illustrating the life of the city, and how people are now, uh, again, learning how to really do a service economy, which really will bring tourists, and which will, I think, help the economy in general. Now, we also visited one of the most famous monasteries in all of Armenia called Havartin, 13th century, in the region of Tabush. Uh, it is a series, a complex of buildings. Here's the interesting part. About uh, 10 years ago, the entire monastery was renovated. And who renovated it? A wealthy emirate prince who came from Sharjah, which is in the United Arab Emirates. He came to Armenia and uh, paid for the reconstruction of this monastery complex. You can see it in the background. Um, these monastery complexes are often located in remote areas. And by traveling to those remote areas, we actually get a chance to see, again, the geography, the topography of Armenia. This is in a very beautiful forested area. That's very close to Dilijan. Dilijan is this uh, beautiful resort area, which was for many years the place where Soviet, uh, the Soviets had their uh, summer homes. So there would be places for uh, scientists to go. And they still hold conferences and, and those kinds of places. Uh, another important trip was to the southern tail of Armenia. Southern tail is this area. This is, this is old Baskuragan, but this is Iran today, everyone. So the boundary with Iran is here, the border. This is Azerbaijan, Nakhichevan. This is Artsakh, of course, but it is in the boundaries of what used to be Azerbaijan. And the yellow part here is Turkey. So from Yerevan, we took uh, an overnight trip an overnight trip to the southern part of Armenia because we wanted to spend time in, in this area, and I'll show you some, some of this area. Uh, so wine, Adeni vineyards. Um, Adeni is a, is a type of wine. It's a sort. Uh, and the winery that you see here was started by two Armenians who actually visited Fresno State about 20 years ago, uh, 25 years ago. It's uh, Hovanes and... His wife, they still remember me, because when they came to Fresno State, it was communist times. And at that time, they didn't even have bottles, they didn't have labels, they didn't have corks. And we, not me personally, but the agriculture department here, helped them to develop the wine industry. And today, this is a, a really beautiful wine tasting area. It's in the southern part of Armenia, where the wine is actually grown. Uh, and so. Again, it's for us uh, a way to, to learn about uh, this area. Now, we went to the city called Goris. Goris, a lot of people don't know about Goris. Goris is way to the southern part of Armenia. Let me go back for just a moment. Uh, it's right over here. Right here, Goris. 
So it took us a full day to go to Goris, and that's where we spent the night. And, and we stayed at a place called the Mir Hav Hotel. It was a kind of a boutique hotel, but if, if I suggest to you anybody going to Armenia, I would tell you 100% stay at this hotel. It was maybe about 10 rooms, uh, and our group took up about eight of them. But we had a really interesting time because it was walking distance to the center of Old Godis. We're going to see it in just a moment. Uh, they had a beautiful patio. Uh, we had a really just beautiful breakfast there, a very, very nice breakfast uh, outside. It was a beautiful summer day. By the way, the temperature in Armenia when we were there was in the high 70s and low 80s. It was never hot. This is late May and June, a really nice time to go. Uh, you can see everyone looks pretty happy. Andrew, I think, was sleeping. Where were you, Andrew? I don't remember where you were at. Uh, he's not in the picture, but uh, we had a really nice breakfast here uh, in, in Goris. So, Goris is an old Armenian center. And when we were, went walking, so we ordered dinner and then we said, uh, it's going to be about half an hour till we eat. So we said, let's go walking. I said, let's go walking into the center of Goris. And in the center of Goris, uh, we discovered this church, discovered, meaning we hadn't really planned to go here. It's called the Church of St. Gregory the Illuminator. You can see it's quite beautiful. Uh, and it's today the seat of the, of the Diocese of Sunik. Sunik is the southernmost region of Armenia. It's the province. And this is the headquarters of, the, uh, of, the, uh, of that diocese. And then we took a walk around the central square of Gori. So you can see it's getting towards sunset. We're, we're towards 8, 8.30 in the evening. It's pretty late, just like in Fresno. But people were walking around uh, with children. So one thing you see in Armenia at night is that in anywhere you travel, in any city, there are people walking around at night. So maybe in Fresno, if you see people walking around, you go, who's that, who's that person, right? But uh, in, in Armenia, it's very nice that people walk around at night. Uh, and I want to also show you this old building. Not too many old buildings left here, but you see the balcony? That is a typical Armenian architectural style. And the architectural style is, uh, you can see this in Istanbul, in Constantinople. You can see this in other cities in Armenia, in Kars. It is just indicative of an Armenian architectural style. So we were looking at these buildings, uh, and this is one of the older ones that have survived. And then here's our group again. Uh, beautiful sunset, uh, fountains. Goris is a very small town, only about 20,000 people. Don't think of these places as you know, hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, but Goris is an up-and-coming town in Armenia. Uh, there's a tourism industry that's building because it's near the monastery of, uh, of Tatev. And then we went to Chermug. Chermug is, a, is an area famed for its warm water spas and its fountain, and it's actually its waterfall. And I want to show you um, a waterfall here. Just, just to hear that waterfall, but it's just a short little clip I wanted to show you, but um, go, uh, Chernobyl is an area which was a resort area and still is a resort area. So people go there to drink the water, which is believed to have uh, restorative and natural things. It's warm, it's very tasty. No? It tasty. <laughs> it tastes like iron, actually. It tastes like you're drinking iron. It comes naturally out of spouts. And you can just fill up your cup and drink it, and then you spit it out because you don't want to drink it. But it's not very tasty, it really isn't. But it's, it's considered to be healthy, and there are actually uh, places you go and you sit, the spas, right? And then, so it's natural water in the city of Chernobyl. Uh, we went to St. Hipsime and Holy Etchmiati. St. Hipsime is a, is a church which was uh, completed in the 7th century. 7th century, named after Halipsime, the, the famous uh, nun. We went to Holy Etchmiazin, but today Etchmiazin is going uh, under reconstruction, so it's closed. Uh, you, you see the scaffolding, and I think it's going to be closed probably for another year or maybe two years. It's a planned $10 million uh, reconstruction of the church because they discovered that it needs major foundational work, and they're cleaning and repairing the entire church. So I don't have any pictures this year of, of that. But I think we were fortunate to have an audience with His Holiness Kadekin II. So he is the current Catholicos, the head of the Armenian Church worldwide. Um, he has been Catholicos since 1999. 
and our students and I had the opportunity to uh, visit with him. And, you know, he was interested to see who we were. Uh, I have a very long sort of knowledge of the Catholicos because he was in 1990, remember the first picture I showed you? He was the Arashnort, the primate of Yerevan. And at that time, he was providing aid to orphans from uh, the earthquake. And St. Paul Armenian Church, Holy Trinity, other churches were sending money. And he was the one that was giving that money to all of the poor people that needed it in Armenia. A lot of people don't know that about the Catholicos, that when he was the primate in Yerevan, uh, he ran this, this center which was providing a lot of support for people in Armenia. Uh, here's a close-up of the Catholicos. Since 1999, he's been the Catholicos. Um, Hakwat, Sanahin, Ozun are some more uh, interesting places. So I'm kind of giving you the, the pictures, and then in a moment we're going to look at a video, and I think you'll get a different perspective of everything. Uh, one of our favorite places was the church at Ozun. Here's the dead hive here. Uh, he kind of almost lives at the church, and he knows every nook and cranny of the church. And if anybody visits, he takes us immediately into the church, anyone, any visitor, and he can go into uh, the church at Ozun. It's another old church, 7th century Armenian church. And outside of it, there's this monument. It's a funerary monument. Hey, everybody's happy, pretty much happy uh, on our trip. So, you know, it's a, it's a fun trip, everyone. Uh, when we go on these long trips, uh, part of the fun is just interacting with everyone in the bus, talking to everyone, having fun as we're traveling and, and going to all these places. And here's the monastery at uh, Hakpat. These are lots of monasteries. I know uh, Andrew tallied it up. How many churches did we visit? About 22. About 22 Armenian churches. But 22 churches because they took us to various areas of Armenia. And through the churches, we learned uh, about the country of Armenia. And a very important Armenian khachkar at, um, at the monastery of Hakpat. It has Jesus on it. Uh, this is a 1273 Armenian khachkar, 13th century. All right, so now we're going to take a break. We're going to take a look at a video. Uh, and then after the video, uh, a couple of the students will talk to you. And then I have just a few slides to finish up with. And then uh, I'll invite Professor Laporta to say a few words and any of the other students. So let's watch a little video of uh, Armenia. Put this on and put that on for just a second. <clears throat> Taking a second to put it up for you. Okay, so we're going to see it. It's got music to it. And we're ready to go.
So I'd like to acknowledge uh, one of our students who was the person who filmed it and then put it together, produced it, and put the music. So Andrew Hagokian, who stand up for a moment. Okay, so we're, we're kind of on the last legs of what I'm going to be showing you, and then we can, we're going to hear from some of the students, so we'll be able to do that. Of course, we visited the um, temple at Garni, first century temple, very important pagan temple, because it's the only pre-Christian monument left in all of Armenia. As you can see, it's in a sort of a Greek and Roman style, Greco-Roman style, uh, temple of uh, the first century Armenian king, pagan temple. But look at, the, look at the area that this uh, area of Garni is in. Garni is in an area which uh, is, has been for centuries a summer resort area because it's high up. In the background, going in this direction, would be Mount Ararat. But here you see the river valley, and we're, we're right here at the Temple of Garni, so we're right at this beautiful area of, uh, of Armenia. The, the Monastery of Gevart. Uh, you know, right at the beginning when you walk up, uh, the... The vendors are selling what is called kata, a sweet bread, with, usually with a cross on it, and they're competing to see, you know, who's going to buy, and so they'll say, give us, give us a test, they'll, they'll give you a piece of the bread, and you decide which one you want, so uh, here you can see Susie and Kara uh, have gotten one, and I don't know where you got the flowers from, but maybe you got them too. You got them too? Okay, so... Uh, let me tell you one of the ways one of the ways that Armenia has really changed is in the number of tourists. I don't know if you've been reading about it, but the number of tourists to Armenia is growing exponentially. I think it's up 12 percent this year. When we went to Gehart, uh, the line to get to Gehart was a quarter mile away. We had to park very far away to get to Gehart, uh, but it didn't really change the experience. It's just telling us that Armenia today is now a place that is becoming a tourist destination. Um, now I just want to briefly talk about the Megarian Carpet Factory. A lot of people know about the Tevankian Carpet Factory, but people don't know about the Megarian Carpet Factory. Uh, you can read, I'll, I'll tell you just very briefly, it was established in 1917, actually in New York, but then they moved back to Armenia when Armenia became independent. Why did I want to go to, to this uh, carpet factory? Because they produce all of their own materials from natural sources, natural dyes. So all of these are natural colors which are used in their carpets. Take a look at the beautiful carpets. They have a wonderful showroom with historical carpets. Uh, Artsakh design, dragon design, all the different designs that you can give, and they also have a place you can have dinner. 
So you have a wonderful dinner within the environment of this uh, carpet factory. And actually, we got a special treat. We were able to see uh, a toniv. A toniv is the Armenian oven which is in the ground. And the ladies were baking bread, and we actually got to slap the bread into the lavash, into the sides. Did somebody fall in? Matthew, did you almost fall in? No. Somebody's, somebody's lavash dropped in there and it burned. But uh, again, that experience is part of, again, uh, what the Armenians do, because that tonia is a historical part of uh, Armenian life. Beautiful, uh, beautiful food here. I think we had dolma and sarma here. Now, let's, uh, we're, we're toward the last part of the, uh, of the trip here. Uh, we went to the American University of Armenia. Fresno State has an agreement with uh, American University of Armenia, and the Kashian Family Foundation in Fresno supports students to go to, to uh, Armenia to study for a semester. Stephen went uh, about a year ago. He spent one semester in Armenia at the American University, and we've had students go in the summer and also in uh, the fall to study there, and it's open for any students. So any student at Fresno State can apply to the program, and if they are accepted, they can go study there. The curriculum is in English, so it's a way for you to also take Armenian courses there, but you can also take business courses and other courses. It was founded in 1991. Uh, we had an opportunity to have uh, a discussion with Professor Varam Dermatevosian. He's really one of the best political scientists in the country, and he talked to our group about current events. Because in 2018, the Velvet Revolution took place in Armenia, and there were huge political changes. We had a chance to talk to him and some of his students, and had an opportunity to also get a tour of the American University. We also went to the TUMO Center, which is one of the innovative uh, new high-tech centers. It's a place where children can go after school, and there are uh, programs for them to uh, in engage in learning about filmmaking, learning about robotics, learning about toy making, uh, and it's all about making children become uh, more, in, you know, using their creativity. It's a creative spot. It's called the TUMO Center, T-U-M-O, named after Hobanes Tumanyan because the park next to it is the Tumanyan Park. Then we went to the brandy factory. I already mentioned to you about the brandy factory. This is before, the, before we had the tasting. So we had, uh, we had a tasting of 10-year-old, 20-year-old, and a little bit older brandy. And we also got a history of the uh, brandy making. And uh, this just gives you an idea, again, of some of the food we had in Armenia. Some really fresh uh, vegetables and all different types of food. And then finally, the last section before we, we end with my part of the program is, again, I always like to make the connections and tell students, you know, you go to Armenia, but we have a connection in Fresno with Armenia. There are four ways that I always see connections between Armenia and Fresno. There's more than that, but four is what I think of. One is the, the statue of David of Sassoon in Yerevan. We have the same statue, a statue of David the Sas of Sassoon, uh, completed by the artist Varas Samuelian in 1970. It's in Courthouse Park in downtown. That's a connection. That's an epic hero of the Armenian people. We also have the Mevhuis program where you saw about the, the young girls uh, that you saw dancing in the video. Uh, this program houses 20 young uh, girls from ages 8 to 16, 18, and provides them a safe haven. These girls come from disadvantaged families. Their parents cannot take care of them properly. If they were not in our program, they would literally be out in the streets in very bad uh, condition. Uh, this is the, the group, this is the girls. We spent a couple of days going there in the afternoon to spend time with them. Uh, I think our students found this as one of the highlights of their trip. I want to show you a little bit of dancing. Oh no, you don't want to see the dancing? Yeah. Let's see. Too close. No, it's got a back there somewhere. There it is. I think Matthew was the best dancer. Stephen was pretty good too. So what we did was to just engage with the with the young people. They all are learning English, so we could communicate with them.
they go to regular school, and then after school they come back to the home. They live in the home here, and they get language training, they get computer training, they, they get a lot of help. And the pur purpose of this is that so that by the age of 18, uh, when they graduate, they can go to college. We have four of our graduates already in college. So on February 22nd, we're having a benefit concert here at Fresno State, and all the proceeds are going to help uh, this program. So you're all invited to attend. We'll tell you more about it. That's the benefit concert. Uh, we're going to have Michael Krikorian, the pianist, uh, also some uh, vocalists that are coming from Los Angeles. It's going to be a wonderful program, and again, it's going to really help the, the uh, Bedouin's program. We already saw the Armenian Genocide Monument and Museum. It's really one of the most moving places you can visit in Armenia. There's, there's a very <coughs> wonderful museum that really gives you an idea about the Armenian Genocide, the monument itself. And in, in 2011, uh, we planted a tree in the Memorial Grove. The Memorial Grove is only reserved for people who plant trees that are usually like presidents of countries, prime ministers, but we were given the privilege of planting a tree. Look at what it looked like in 2011. That's when we planted it. And this is what it looks like today. It's this big tree, it's the same tree. So we're very happy that there is a place when you come from Fresno to Armenia, you can visit, that's Fresno, right? That's our tree. Ours meaning the students and our program and, and Fresno's tree. And there's a little, little plaque to commemorate that as well. And finally, the last connection is between uh, William Soroyan and Fresno. Uh, William Soroyan was born in Fresno in 1908, died here in 1981. When he died, he requested that half of his ashes be taken to Armenia uh, to be buried. And then someday, if Armenia was ever to re reclaim the city of Bitlis, where he was born, he wanted his ashes to be scattered there. This is his uh, memorial in Armenia. And this is the Soroyan House Museum I was telling you a little bit about earlier. It's a place where you can go and learn about William Soroyan. It's the actual home he lived in the last 17 years of his life here on 2729 West Griffith Way. It is a high-tech museum. You can learn about him through a hologram, through uh, videos, and through other kinds of places. So, uh, finally, just take a look at some of these quotes. I won't read them. These are quotes from uh, various students about the impact. This is the, the quotes here, but in a moment we're going to have some of the students come up. But you can just see uh, some of the feelings. Um, my feelings about Armenia and the Armenian people is that they are both incredible. It's kind of, it's kind of all there for you. Uh, they were kind and brotherly. They made us feel as if we were also Armenian citizens. So, uh, that's the purpose in our trips. Our purpose is that students are changed, and it, the changes maybe we don't see in six months, but maybe we see in five or ten years, because they'll say, you know, that trip changed my life. I can tell you in 1978, when I first visited Armenia, 1978, it did change the direction of my life. I don't think I would be here today in this spot if I hadn't gone to Armenia in 1978, some 40 years ago. So thank you very much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed our, our program. We're now going to hear from our students. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the lights on if Opsep is around. If he's not, we're going to turn the lights on. So we just have a couple of students that have expressed the wish, and I really wanted them to come up and just say a few words. I think Stephen would like to do so. Would you like to come up, Stephen? Uh, Stephen Gonzalez is not Armenian. He's minoring in Armenian studies here at Fresno State. As I said, he already studied a year uh, semester at, in Armenia, and he wanted to say a few words. So go ahead. Hello, as a Professor Bottle said, my name is Stephen Gonzalez, and this was actually my second time visiting the land of Hayastan. And oh boy, I want to go back. <laughs> there, 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 is, there is nothing like it in this world. If if there is heaven on earth, it is it is Armenia because the people are very kind. It's rich with culture and history. The nightlife is great. You know, you can walk the you can walk the streets at ten o'clock at night, and you know people are enjoying ice cream and just living their life to the fullest. And so when I went the first time studying at the American University of Armenia, that was an eye-opener because I got to immerse myself in a culture that isn't American. And I feel like I was adopted by the nation of Armenia, and so hopefully I will get another chance to go back. Thank you.
think it was just, uh, you know, Stephen took one of our classes in Armenian studies, became interested, took more classes, and, uh, enrolled for a minor, and now he's really engaged with Armenia. Susie, did you want to say a few words? I, I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but if any of you, uh, the students, want to say a few words, we want to welcome you to come up and give a little bit of your reflections. So this was my first time actually going to Armenia, and I really have wanted to from as soon as I could, I knew that I was Armenian, I wanted to go, and this trip, as Professor Barlow said, it really changed my life. The experiences of seeing what we learned in the classroom was something that I can't even explain. It was so amazing to connect with all these wonderful people, and we were just together in a group, and we got to experience these amazing things, eat amazing food, see wonderful things, culture, dancing, and the, student, uh, the girls at Mary to uh, totally stole a piece of my heart, uh, and I would love to go back there and see them again one day. Um, they were so amazing children, and they were so talented, and I cannot wait to go back to Armenia again, uh, hopefully again with another group like that, because, and I would personally like to thank Professor Barlow for everything that he did for us. He planned an amazing program. We got to see everything you could possibly ever imagine to do in Armenia, and in such a short amount of time, I cannot express my gratitude enough. Thank you. So thank you. Well, I had a very minor role in the going of this trip, but I did do the filming of the trip and documenting of all the places that we went to. And uh, my feelings towards the trip, I've taken five uh, courses so far in the Armenian Studies program here at Fresno State, and I feel that when I learned about these places, I didn't really have a connection to them, but it was nice to know the history of what the Armenians built, and then going there firsthand and seeing it in person really affected me and touched me. Uh, to see that it was an actual place, as Professor Barlow Dermergadichin stated, and to see not only the church in existence, but the people in, that, in those places. Uh, on weekdays, weekends, going in there, just lighting a candle, walking out, um, and basically seeing their daily lives and their cultural values and their religious practices, it pulled me closer to Armenia and the Armenian people. So I draw that connection from Armenia and Fresno, and I can also see what they brought here. So what we've built here as Armenians is a quite a close connection there. So I feel much closer, and I have Thanks to Professor Marlo Dermagdichian and Dr. Sergio Laporta, wherever he is right now, um, for leading us and getting us into some very exclusive places that we would not ordinarily get to get to see as just tourists. So thank you. Okay. So what I didn't mention, I, and I meant to say, is that this was actually a course. So it's a, it's a three-unit course. Uh, so the students actually had some assignments. And if you want to read more extensively about their reflections, you can read it in High Sharjum. So in our October issue, uh, we have interviews with some of the students telling also about their, their uh, reflections. Anyone else? Kara, David, anybody? Kara, come on up. Um. So this was my second time going to Armenia with Fresno State and with the Armenian Studies program. Um, I went in 2017 and then again on this last trip. And I am so thankful for my experiences that I got to have and the connections I got to make with not just the people at my school, but with people in Armenia. Um, it's amazing. It's, the be it's one of the best places in the whole entire world. And if you have the chance to go, take it in an instant. Um, I got to go with my brother, who couldn't be here tonight, but my brother, for his first trip, we went together. And um, it, was, it was amazing. And so I want to thank Professor Barlow Dermogadichin and Dr. Sergio Laporta for taking me again to Armenia. <laughs> um, and thank you so much. It really is amazing. So. 
So while it is I and Professor Laporta again that lead the trip, but we get support, as I said, through the Leon S. Peters Foundation and through the study abroad program to help make these types of trips um, important. And I think Kara had a special uh, connection to Armenia because she had her birthday in Armenia this year. And um, where, where is your place, Kara? Kara? Tana Hun. Tana So the, the uh, Armenian Zorats Kader, the old 7,000-year-old Armenian stones are named after Kara. Uh, <laughs> any of the other students would like to say anything? Anybody else? Okay. So um, that's, our, that's our presentation. I'd like to open it up if you have any particular questions about anything you saw or heard. And if you have a question for a particular student or for myself, we can spend five or ten minutes. If you'd like to, um, I can open it up for questions or comments. Yes. So do I plan on taking another trip next year? So uh, we have to plan ahead. If, uh, if it's not next year, it's probably going to be every two to three years. So uh, typically I don't do the trips every year, uh, just because we get busy with a lot of things. But if it were to be another trip, it would be in two, two or years or in three years. Yeah. Other questions? Well, thank you for joining us. We have some wonderful refreshments. I want to thank Zara Dermagradichian for uh, providing the refreshments today. And thank you for joining us. This is our final uh, presentation in our fall lecture series. In the spring, in February, we're going to be greeting our new Kazan visiting professor in Armenian studies. And he is going to be giving three public lectures. I'm going to save his name for a public announcement, which will come up very shortly. We'll publicly announce his coming. And in the next uh, year next semester we're going to have uh, movies with cineculture. We're going to have uh, two wonderful uh, presentations on award-winning books, and it's just going to be a lot of fun uh, coming up in this semester. So we'll see you then, and uh, please come out and enjoy some coffee and meet with our students. Thank you. We had seven people. Look at all the people. I'm to Steve Adams. Did I get it? I threw it off.